Hello friends, uh, welcome to Jojo's uh, Azure Learning uh, YouTube channel. Uh, today's video, uh, we will be talking about AC900 certification questions and answers part 2. If you are not already watched part 1, please uh, uh, watch that first and then you can actually watch the part 2. Uh, let's get started. The question number uh, 60. So we completed uh, 59 questions um, in the part 1 video. This is uh, part 2. So question number 60. Match the services on the left to the correct description on the right. So you can see already there is an answer to log analytics. Um, so let's see. Let's come. A tool in the Azure portal that's used to edit and run log queries against data in the Azure monitor logs stored in log analytics. So the, the any any logs you can put uh, in the uh, Azure Monitor logs are kept um, in the log analytics and then you can actually send any query. So that's the question's answer to the question is log analytics. Um, we have platform for check the first question platform for collecting data on your resources, analyzing the data, visualizing the information, and even acting the result. Monitor Azure resources on your promised resources, even multi-cloud resources like virtual machine hosted with a different cloud provider. You can see monitor Azure resources. The answer is right there. You can check the keyword here. So the answer to the question will be Azure, Azure monitor. So the answer to, uh, to the question itself, the question itself has the answer, monitor Azure resources. This one help you to detect and address issues before users notice them by proactively notifying you when Azure Monitor data indicates that there may be a problem with your infrastructure or application. So it's it's it you can see proactively notifying even before the users know them. So it's like something should be kind of an alert. It will let you an alert. Oh, there's some issue. Uh, first, uh, any uh, that might be you know answer to that question. If you see that. I can see that's the monitor alerts, Azure monitor alerts. And the last question to this uh, section is a big data streaming platform and event ingestion service. It can receive and process millions of events per second. So millions of events per second and in the ingestion service and a big data. So answer to event hub. So the event hubs are um, able to perform millions of events per second so the keyword here millions of events per second so you need to check on that events the question itself you always this kind of question i uh, will have the answer to the question itself millions of events events up all right going into the next question question number 61 company a is planning to use azure storage account for below requirements storage capacity of 5 terabyte store billions of files will this accomplish the requirement storage account right there is no limit you can store any millions of files so answer to this question is yes moving on to next question question number 62 a company wants to use azure storage account and the requirement is data should automatically replicate to the secondary region is lrs dot lrs is a locally redundant storage is this configuration accomplish this requirement? So geographical into a different region, so it will be GRS, not LRS. So answer this question is no. Going into the next question, question number 63. The Dash is a cloud-based security solution that leverages your on-premises Active Directory, signals to identity Sorry, identify, uh, detect and investigate advanced threats, compromised identities, and malicious insider actions directed at your organization. So looking for a cloud-based security solution that can detect any, any malicious activity directed at your organization. So two answers that apply. So what can actually uh, uh, provide or, uh, you know, just identify? It is, uh, it is trying to protect from the threats from malicious threat from outside. I can really say um, investigate advanced threats. So answer is always there in the question itself. So that will be advanced threat protection. 
and uh, you wanted to select the two answers. Uh, the advanced threat protection is uh, was the old name for ATP is the old name and Microsoft Defender for Identity is a new name. So you can select both these if the answer comes in both ATP and then Microsoft Defender for Identity, both can be the answer. So advanced threat protection that's one of the answer and Microsoft Defender for Identity is the second answer because both are the same thing. It's a new name. Microsoft Defender for Identity is a new name for ATP. Okay, going into the next question, question number 64. Company A has deployed a VM from Azure portal. Below is the screenshot that gives the overview and a public IP address is assigned. No users are able to access the VM. What is the first step you do to troubleshoot this issue? So in the screenshot below you see that AD-VM01, there is a virtual machine and you can see that Operating system is Windows and it's the standard V2MS and public IP address, IP address is allowed. The question is, uh, no, no users are able to access the VM. How do you troubleshoot this issue? So the uh, options are add rule to allow to access RDB port using network security group. VM cannot access via public IP as firewall is blocked. Is it a firewall issue or you need to add some port in NSG? VM needs to be is to start at first, none of the above. So answer this question is uh, VM needs to be started first. Even if you want to access anything virtual machine, you can see that status is stopped and deallocated. If the VM is stopped, nobody can able to access. So next question, uh, question number 65. So below is not the valid Azure virtual machine billing and power statuses. So I put a screenshot here, what are the valid statuses of power states or billing of the virtual machine? A virtual machine can be uh, creating, um, creating status, it's not deploying and deploying is started and then creating and VM is starting, starting and running, stopping, stop, deallocating and deallocated. So stopping is the answer, deallocating, creating and um, started so what is the answer to the started started is not one of these uh, status it is saying not the valid uh, status so started is the answer to this question moving on to the next question question number 66 company a is deployed two vms from azure portal as shown below do both these vms incur same monthly compute cost so there is a prod VM1 and then prod VM2 virtual machine and then region central US and west US and both are the same VM SKU and the same size exactly the same and is a windows operating system. So is it cost is going to be the compute cost is going to be the same for prod VM1 and VM2 for month monthly that's the that's the question so the answer to this question is no even if it is the same skew it depends upon the region the cost is different i will show you uh, in azure portal uh, or uh, you can actually see it on the pricing calculator i'll show you in a second so the azure uh, pricing calculator you can just google it and then go hit from here uh, and once you go select the virtual machine and you added a virtual machine and then view that once you see that uh, you know west us um, windows um, you can here select uh, our question da4 d4a d4a v4 so that is a uh, 4 cpu 16 gig ram and um, it's a west us region is select and it is monthly cost 163.52 and if you select central us it's 158 so it's cheaper in central us you can see 292 here and if it is goes to west us this 297 so this includes the licensing cost as well so it's there is a five dollar difference monthly so remember that the compute costs are not the same for the same vm 
in different region different region it is different costs are different okay remember that so answer to this question is no the cost is not same moving on to the next question question number 67 a company is starting uh, to use azure subscription and deploy resources in azure which of the following will define the dependencies between resources so they are deployed in the correct order azure management group azure resource groups azure resource group uh, resource manager azure policies so azure resource manager so the answer, uh, the question is dependencies between resources so they are deployed in the correct order azure resource manager i put a link below to see what exactly azure resource manager can do it i put a link where i can show you that here you see the benefits of using resource manager with the resource manager you can see this define the dependencies between resources so they are deployed in the correct order okay so the answer to the question uh, is a resource manager so moving on to the next question question number 68 a company a has the azure subscription and a resource group named rg1 can administrator create another nested resource group in the resource group rg1 so rg1 inside that can i create a nested and one more resource group under rg1 no nested groups uh, resource groups are not allowed so no answer to this question moving on to the next question question number 69 Company A has Azure subscription and two resource groups named RG1 and RG2. Can Azure VM be a part of multiple resource group? If we create a VM, it has to be only one resource group. You cannot put one resource into a different uh, resource group. So answer to this question is no. So moving on to the next question. Question number seventy. Which Azure Active Directory feature is used to provide access to resource-based and organizational policies so the uh, multi factor authentication sso administrative units and conditional access so or organization have a policy to allow you know certain uh, compliant devices certain devices um, so that only can be allowed through conditional access policy so answer to this question is conditional access Conditional access is a tool used by the Azure Active Directory. So, Azure Active Directory, the conditional access is a part of Azure Active Directory to allow or deny access to resource based on identity signal. So, resource based conditional access is more defined in MFA method. So, moving on to next question, question number seventy-one. Single sign-on SSO is dash method. that enables users to sign in first time and access various application and resource by using the same password is so what kind of a method is a single sign on is it a validation method authentication method configuration method authorization method yeah so so is a authentication method so single sign on is an authentication method that allow user to sign in using one set of credential to use into various application So, so single sign on is um, is a authentication method and uh, moving on to the next question question number 72 match the services on the left to the correct description on the right a pricing calculator a tco total cost ownership calculator cost management so select the uh, description from the right what suiting the left so pricing calculator a1 uh, estimate work workload cost B TCO total cost ownership calculator is equal to B two and cost management helps control analyze optimize optimize the workload cost. So you need to select uh, from that A one. Answer is A one, B two, C three. So exactly the same. Going into next question, question number seventy three. So Dash is a repeatable set of governance tools that helps development teams quickly build and create new environment while adhering to organization compliance to speed up the development and uh, deployment. DevOps, CI/CD pipeline co- configuration, Azure Blueprints, and Azure Policy. Answer is Blueprints. So the Blueprints, Azure Blueprints, is the governance tool. This is a governance tool. 
So remember that what is Azure Blueprints? One question can come from Azure Blueprints. Going to the next question. Question number 74. Which cloud approach is used by organization to take full advantage of on-premises technology investments and allows data and application to be shared between two environments? On-premise technology investments and allows data and application to be shared between two environments. It's talking about public and private cloud. So basically, answer is C, hybrid cloud. The hybrid cloud is uses the on-premise infrastructure and also public cloud or a private cloud with a public cloud. It's kind of hybrid. So hybrid cloud allow data and apps to move between these two environments. So between these two environments shared between on-premise and this one, so it will be hybrid cloud. Answer is C, hybrid cloud. Moving on to the next question, question number 75. Which option is used to set the communication between an on-premise VPN device and the Azure VPN gateway through an encrypted tunnel over the internet? Whenever you see an encrypted tunnel over the internet, that's always a VPN. It's not an express route. So if it is, uh, if it is from an uh, on-premise VPN device, is only required when it's a side-to-side -side VPN. So answer to this question is side-to-side -side VPN. So going to the next question, question number 76. You use Dash to organize resources in an Azure subscription. Azure region, resource groups, management groups, administrative units. So resources, you want to organize the resources, resource group. Organize resources is in resource groups. Answer is B. So if you, if you want to keep it a particular project, you create a resource group for that project and you can put all the resources in that resource group. So every resources in that particular project organized to a resource group. So answer is organized resources is resource groups. Answer B. Going to the next question, question number 77. Company A has a multiple Azure subscriptions and multiple resources in each subscription. Azure administrator wants to find out the number of keywords across all subscription, which is the fastest method to get the count. This is a really very good question. So I wanted to know how many keywords are there across all subscription. Use Azure Resource Explorer to query feature, open key fold and count manually. Definitely not counting manually is not a fastest method. Open key vault and apply filters. Even that's not uh, looks like a promising one. Apply tag to resources and run a PowerShell script to query. Even tagging a resources and then uh, run a PowerShell script to query, it is not a fastest method. So let's see what is the answer to this question. Azure Resource Explorer query feature. So remember that to get a number of uh, keywords across all subscription, use the Azure Resource Explorer query feature. That's the fastest method. Next question, question number 78. Company A has many services and want to have the ability to store secrets and certificates in Azure Cloud. The architect recommended to use Azure Key Vault. Is this accomplished this requirement? Yes, of course. If you want to store um, secrets, certificates and everything, Key Vault is the best answer. Question number 79. What are the RBAC roles? Resource uh, role based access controls for user to sign into Azure Information Protection AIP. Uh, can you use the uh, Azure In Information Protection Administrator, Compliance Administrator, Compliance Data Administrator, Security Administrator, Global Administrator? So, this question is uh, almost sure uh, it, it can be asked in the exam. So global administrator, any, any is, it's, it's like a very high privilege, global administrator. So that's, that's possible, global administrator. Security administrator also possible, AIP related to security. Compliance administrator, both data administrator and compliance data administrator. And then Azure Information Protection Administrator. If there's a, uh, it's like a contributor or something else comes in, that is not the answer. All right, going on to the question number 80. 
Can a single Microsoft account can be used to manage multiple Azure subscription? So answer to the question is yes. you can just use some one Microsoft account and manage uh, multiple Azure subscription. So when you log into Azure portal, you log in within a Microsoft account and you can see many many subscription in there. It may be a dev subscription, production, or hub subscription. So just use one account. You can see all the subscription. So answer yes, one account you can manage multiple subscription. Answer is yes. Uh, this question number eighty one. Can two Azure subscription can be merged into a single subscription by creating a support request? So answer this question is no. Is this not a simple uh, support request? You can tell them to uh, merge two subscription. Moving on to next question, question number eighty-two. Can a company can store resources in a multiple subscription? Yes, of course, sure. I can uh, actually save resources in uh, dev subscription or uh, production subscription. Yes, it is. Going to the next question, question number eighty-three. What is the best option to monitor users' login, account changes, and computer account are on on-premise Active Directory? So the answer to this question is Microsoft Defender for Identity. So Microsoft Defender for Identity, it is also known as Advanced Threat Protection. Azure ATP is a cloud-based security solution that leverages or your on-premises Active Directory signal to identify, detect, and investigate advanced threat. So the answer to this question is Microsoft Defender for Identity. Moving on to the next question, question number eighty-four. What are the two advantages of hybrid cloud model? The advantages of hybrid cloud, I have put a screenshot here. Control. The organization can maintain a private infrastructure for sensitive asset on workload that require low, low latency. Control flexibility. You know, whenever you want, you can create more resources. This is flexible. You don't need to buy hardware. Cost effectiveness, uh, ability to scale the public cloud. Uh, we can get the computing power, and we can just uh, automate uh, the virtual machine to stop whenever it is not in use. So we can save the cost. Ease. Previously, to create a ease of, you know, previously creating a, a server, it will take uh, three four weeks. And uh, now it's just a two minutes. A virtual machine is created, so it is transitioning to cloud. It's not overwhelming because you can imagine migrate gradually in phase over time. You can just do it slowly, so it's easy. So if anything else comes in, then you need to select no. So these are the four ad um, advantages. If two comes in, you can just collect flexibility and cost effectiveness. Going on to the next question, question number eighty-five. His company needs to set up domain controllers on Azure Virtual Machine to use Active Directory. Not really. Um, Azure Active Directory is the PaaS service, right? So it doesn't need to have a virtual machine. Uh, so answer is will be no. So you can see here, Azure Active Directory is a cloud-based identity and acts across management service. So it doesn't need to um, have the uh, virtual machine and then install Active Directory. That will be in a local Active Directory. Going on to the next question, question number eighty-six. Is storage account block pricing is same for all Azure region? No, it's it's not same. The storage account cost is not same. If you go to the pricing calculator, you can um, you can see that. Uh, if you select a different region, that will be a different cost. You have selected a UK South here, in nineteen dollar. You can check yourself. If you select a Central US, it will be a different price. The storage account flow pricing is not same. Going on to next question. Question number eighty-seven. If the storage account flow pricing is based on the Amount of amount of data stored and not for read write operations. It's not just the data stored on the storage account, the blow pricing. It also depends on how much read write operations. 
So you can see the answer to no. You can see that total cost of the block blob storage depends on how much data is stored per month, quantity and types of operation performed along with the data transfer cost. So read write operation is also cost to you and also what kind of a redundancy you are selected LRS, GRS, DRS. So that's the three options we have. So not just the amount of data. So answer is no. Going on to the next question. 88. Company A has a storage accounts in two Azure region. Is there a cost to transfer data between Azure storage account in two different Azure region? Yeah, everything has its cost. If you wanted to transfer the data transfer, if you want to uh, transfer from one storage account to another, there is a cost involved. Moving on to the question number 18. What support plan to get 24 by 7 support to email phone from a customer support engineer? If you want a 24 by 7 access to technical support by email and phone, if you are 24 by 7 to email phone, then even developer is not an option. Developer is only business hours. So the answer to this question is standard. So 24 7 access to a technical support by email, 24 by 7 they mentioned. So answer is standard. Standard support plan you need to take it. So answer this question is standard support plan. Okay, moving on to the next question. Question number 90. You can use the Azure portal to configure and dash with a certificate for a TLS termination that uses virtual machine for a backend service. So it is talking about TLS termination and backend servers. So it's like kind of a load balancer. Whether it is an application load balancer or application gateway. See, uh, load balancer is, uh, this one is uh, Azure load balancer is layer 3. So application gateway is another load balancer, but it can also do a TLS termination and also SSS TLS termination also on the backend server. So let's see what is the answer to this question is application gateway. Because application gateway is layer 7. So it can do an, it do, does do on the 443 TLS uh, termination. Load balancer is a normal layer, layer 3 uh, network layer uh, load balancer. It cannot do TLS termination. So answer this question is Azure Application Gateway. Question number 91. Company A has the Azure load balancer set up and two VMs are behind the load balancer. How do you ensure the user requests are always mapped to the same VM that process the initial request? So what is that? Disable the VM in the law, set session persistent to a client IP. So with that client IP, you have to keep it a client persistent. Create a load balancer rule to connect to a VM only. Load balancer always automatically round robin between VMs. So answer this question is set session persistent to client IP. Moving on to the next question, question number 92. Company A has a resource group named RG1 and a resource storage account what azure service will notify you a resource is deleted in resource group one see the resource group monitor i don't think there is nothing called resource group monitor event grid service health is not for a uh, it's like our region failure or something like that so service health is not the answer resource group monitor is not, not nothing like that there is nothing resource group monitor so what will be the answer to these questions it can be event grid or event hub. So event grid is the answer. Event hub is billions of uh, you know different hub and grid. So you can just go to the event grid and see. Uh, it will exactly say you how, to, how it will notify you if it is a resource is deleted. So this question is answered. Okay, moving on to the next question. This question is company A as resource group RG1 in their subscription and it, it has a resource storage account named STGS storage account 001. You plan to assign a policy that specifies that storage accounts are not allowed resource type in RG1. What will happen to storage account after applying the policy? So basically it has a, there's a, there, there, there is a policy you are going to apply that saying that this resource group storage account is not allowed. And already there is a storage account in that resource group. So what will happen to that existing storage account? 
will that get deleted or moved to a different one or it will not uh, have fun anything so the first uh, the options are the storage account will be deleted because you are saying that the policy that storage account should not be in that resource group storage account will be moved to another resource group storage account continue to exist as it is the policy cannot be applied to resource group as it has not it has not allowed resource type what is the answer to this question so nothing will happen it will only apply to a new it is not allowed but it is already allowed then it will exist as it is but if you are trying to create a new storage account it will not allow you because our policy is already applied it it cannot do anything with uh, um, azure policy cannot do anything with the already existing um, storage account so answer is nothing will happen to storage account it will be as it is question number 94 uh, dash enables you to provision a group of matching and a load balanced virtual machine in azure so azure logic apps and availability set azure virtual machine scale set azure load balancer answer to this question is c the virtual machine scale set enables you to provision a group of matching and same exactly same vm if you want to, it, it 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 has to be the same vm and load balanced it will be azure virtual machine scale set answer is c moving on to the next question question number 95 following azure services are categorized as an example serverless computing is azure virtual machine azure function availability based sql server on azure vm so azure function virtual machine is uh, ias it's, it's not a um, azure service uh, serverless because virtual machine is a server Availability set in the behind the scene it has to have a virtual machine. SQL Server on Azure VM. So Azure Function is the uh, C serverless computing. So going to second next question is 96. Company A has resource group RG1 in their subscription, and it has a resource virtual machine VM1. Resource group has a read-only lock. Can an administrator can start or restart the VM? So you can practice this question. Um, so you just can create a resource group and then uh, deploy a VM and uh, create a lock, read-only lock. If you have a read-only lock, uh, can you restart or restart the VM? Uh, so the answer is the question is no. If you have a read-only lock, it cannot start or restart the VM. So we can um, we can see that. I will show you an action. So I logged into the Azure portal. You can see that. Um, so I'm going to the resource group, and you can see that there is AD infra, and um, this is a resource group name. I'm going to. Uh, there's a lot of VMs here. I'm just going to going to create a lock on it. So under settings, locks. I'm just going to add a log in here, and just put anything, any name, ready, ready. Oh, I mean, it should be read only. You can put any name on it, and in that type, there's a delete and read only log. I'm just putting a read only log. So this is the resource group AD infra, and there is a log. So let's go back to this one. There is a virtual machine running on it. The question is, can I be able to start? Right now, the status is stopped. Will it allow you to start the VM? Uh, let's click on Start. See, you get an error message: "Fail to start virtual machine." Fail error. You can see you cannot perform this right to operation because starting the VM is considered as a right to operation and the is locked. Please remove the lock and try again. So if you want to do that, you need to go to the resource group again and go to under settings. You need to remove the lock. So answer to this question is no. Moving on to the next question, ninety-seven. Company A has a resource group RG1 in their subscription, and it has a many resources, including virtual machine VM1. Ensure that no one can accidentally delete resources that are part of the resource group RG1. Which of the following can be used to accomplish this requirement? Policy tags, logs, and monitor. 
as you already seen there is a two locks are available read only lock means you cannot start but if you create a delete lock you cannot even delete the vm so question here accidentally delete resources so answer to the question is azure resource locks moving on to next question question number 98 company a has a resource group rg1 in their subscription what are the two must have dependent resources that are required to create a virtual machine in vm1 so let's say you have a subscription and you want to create a virtual machine what are the things we need to have so one thing virtual network is because record because the vm is record a ip address so i assure virtual network is record is a prerequisite that is a dependent and also a network interface art the public ip is not even optional data disk is an optional but operating system is an option not an op optional resource group rg2 or oh, already it has a resource group so you can you can create a vm in that resource group so you don't need to create a new uh, resource group uh, rg2 so if there is no resource group i think resource group is also a dependent resource in must have a resource so in this one answer is virtual network and network interface moving on to next question question number 99 Azure Cosmos DB is an example of a dash is an IaaS pass as or serverless serverless so answer this question is pass azure cosmos db is an a pass platform as a service so congratulation uh, the reached a question number 100 100 which one below provides redundancy of at least 99.999% it is actually 16 nines <laughs> Uh, durability of objects over a given year and Azure storage. What kind of storage um, will give you Azure storage um, redundancies? I will give you 16 NANDs, LRS, ZRS, and GRS or none. So it will be GRS, Geo Redundant Storage. That will be the answer to the question. So this will complete or con conclude. This will conclude the part two. Uh, AZ 900 questions and answers. Thank you for watching. Please share and um, uh, subscribe, like. Um, we'll uh, talk to you and we'll see you in next video on part three. Thank you.